Yes, Jerome Luai. Will he stay? Will he go? He's splitting with his agent and will he be splitting with the Panthers when he becomes a free agent and able to talk to other clubs from November? Well, today, Michael himself caught up with the Panthers boss, Matt Cameron, to discuss just that. Well, Matt, thanks for joining us on 100% footy. A lot of talk at the moment about Jerome Luai's future. Where's that at? Yeah, well, to start with Michael, um, we firmly believe that his future's here at Penrith. Um, there's a lot of commentary at the moment about um, you know, what he'll do in 2025, but like any situation we've been in here over the last three or four seasons in particular, uh, our aim here at the Penrith Panthers is, is to keep our players here at the Penrith Panthers. So we'll be doing everything we can in the short term to, uh, to work out a way to get that done. You're in discussions with Dylan Edwards about keeping him at the club. Can you afford to keep both Dylan and Jerome here at the Panthers? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, you know, the, the reality is there's been an increase in the cap. Um, the forecast numbers, although they haven't been agreed to in the RLPA conversation at the moment, there's small increases year on year uh, as we go forward to the 2027 through that cycle. So, yeah, I think by the time we get to 2025 and some of the other roster changes that will happen organically, I think uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident we can, we can get those players done. People are saying that on the open market, both Dylan and Jerome could attract a million dollars plus. If that was the case, can you still afford them? Well, we'd like to think um, we'd like to think we can get that conversation sorted out before November one. And and again, the November one date is a um, you know is a, a mechanism of the current CBA. As a club, we don't get as excited about first of November. Like we understand the ramifications of it, um, but the reality is. You know, all of our players that come off at the end of 24 are still contracted for 24, so we're not getting as anxious about it as um, you know some other people do. What indication has Jerome given to you? Uh, his performance week in and week out, and the way that he conducts himself around the around the academy is is all I need to sort of you know give me the confidence that he wants to be here moving forward, and I'm sure we'll get something sorted out. You know, we've got a philosophy here that's referred to as built from within. Um, and we know the system will, will keep producing kids and if we lose some out of the top, we know that there's some coming through the system that can replace them. Well, Matt, thank you for joining us on 100% Footy. Appreciate your time. No worries. Thank you. Michael and Matt Cameron speaking there uh, about just where this situation stands after Denny Wildler's piece in the Sun Herald on Sunday. Michael, look, we know that every club feels the squeeze, but the Panthers have throughout their last few seasons as they win premierships. They've lost some of their biggest names. Is he going to be the latest to go? Oh, look, time will tell. I, I think this is going to play out for a few months yet. He has given notice uh, to his management. He's got 90 days before he becomes available to other agents, and that's just before the November 1 period there where he becomes a free agent. I think the Panthers are hopeful that, given that he's grown up there, given his connection to the club and they're on the verge of potentially winning three premierships in a row, that perhaps Jerome Luai will take less to stay. Now, I'm not going to speak for Jerome Luai. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure what his motivation will be. He may sign before he becomes a free agent on November 1. But there's no doubt that the squeeze is on at the Penrith Panthers with Dylan Edwards at the moment. They've offered him three years, $850,000 a season. My information is that's not going to be enough to keep him. The management want a longer-term deal. Uh, obviously, there's talk about potentially being a million-dollar player. I don't know if it'll go that far. But if he gets that sort of money, I don't know if Jerome Luai can get seven figures at the Penrith Panthers. Uh, it just won't happen at the Penrith Panthers. Now, he might be OK with that, as Matt Cameron sort of alluded to there. there. There's a system there. They've got a lot of kids coming through. But whether or not he's willing to take less to stay in that winning system, perhaps he may. But I don't think it's the last we've heard of, of Jerome Luai and this contract situation. Well, definitely won't be, given the fact that he's indicated he wants to, to move on from his management. Gal, yeah, what happened in Origin? Does that dent his dollar value? No, I don't think so. Look, I think at the end of the day, his dollar value will be what it is. You'll probably you get offered a whole lot more money from someone else without a doubt, but it's going to be up to him and what he wants. I don't know his situation, his life situation, what his goals are in life, what he wants to do, but I'll, I'll say this. If you're the best player in that position, you'll get the money. The, the, the money will come. And one thing about winning and success, it's fun. It's, it's fun. I was lucky enough to play a long career and I saw both sides. I saw failures and I saw great success. And I can tell you, when you're successful, when you're winning week in, week out, it is fun. Turning up to training is fun. Walking around town is fun. It's fun. So to be successful and to play at a good, strong, powerful club, it, it's worth something. It's now look how much how much difference that money is. If we're talking eight fifty at Penrith, and maybe someone's going to offer him one point two, one point three. That's significant. That's a lot of money. That that let's say life change of that is very very different. If you're talking eight fifty to a million dollars, by the time you pay tax and pay your manager, it's nothing. It's not worth it. I'll be staying at Penrith. If, if, if that was a difference, I'd be staying at Penrith. Well, this, this debate has been going on for a while though, Gus. Whether the Panthers the Panthers seem to have to pick between Dylan Edwards and Jerome Luai. Do you think they have to? 
Not really. I think there's a, a great advantage to all those players in sticking together. You're talking maybe a third premiership. They may be in five or six if they all stay together. <laughs> I can't see any other club building at the rate that's going to challenge them in the next few years. The thing about Jerome Luai's management is Jerome Luai is managed by SFX, but in particular he was married, managed by a gentleman called Daryl Mather, one of the leading managers in the game. Daryl's sort of semi-retired, if not retired now. I haven't heard from Daryl for nearly 12 months. So maybe Jerome is reconsidering whether or not he stays with SFX because Daryl has left. But Jerome just doesn't get around to doing these sorts of things. Everyone else will be worrying about his future. Jerome's the least worried about his future. He's on contract till the end of 2024. And I don't think there's any reason whatsoever why he would be looking to leave the Panthers. That's where he's grown up and that's where he's played. He's playing with the best club in the league, the number one club in the country. Why would he want to move? Oh, I wonder, he's had success. He's won two premierships in a row. He's here this year. Yeah. He's here next year as well. If they, if they win three in a row, that, that's a hell of a amount of success he's had. Now, does he then want to go and lead a team himself to success? That, that, that's that's, that's probably what I wonder. Well, I he, went, so. he, went, he went away and led Samoa to a, to a World Cup final. Yeah. He'd done that well. He wasn't... Look, he's not in clear... I, I can't say he's in clear his shadow, but when you think of Penrith, you probably think of Cleary before Jerome Luai. I wonder whether he wants to be his own man and, be, and become his own leader and, and lead a team to success. I, I, I wonder that. that, I don't that think, well, maybe I don't think he's got is, any intention of leaving Penrith. Well, I, I don't know him as a person. I don't know what his goals may be. But I can see from a, a half-back or a, a game manager point of view, I could see that if that was a reason, I, I could see it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any reason why he would leave Penrith. I don't think he's thinking of leaving Penrith mm. at oh, all. Gus, and I, I, don't, I don't know that money is all that important to him, to be honest. Mm. I won't ask you if the Bulldogs are interested, because I, I imagine if he goes to that free agency period, there'll be a lot of clubs who are interested in him. But I will ask you, though, if he was to go on the market, is he a seven as well, or is, it, is he just a six? He play wherever he likes. He's got the ability to play seven? He's a very, very seven. good footballer, yeah. Um, he's, he's played seven, he's played six, he's played one coming through the system. Um, but I can't see any reason why he won't want to continue his partnership with Nathan Cleary and the Panthers club. I really don't.